morning Bitcoin market update. It's uh, Monday, August 2nd, 2021. Yes, we're opening up another month, another very exciting mark month in the crypto markets. Very exciting, of course, to have our audience and my analysts with us this afternoon. Jason and Alex with us as always. How are you two guys doing? Alex? Oh, I'm good, thank you. All right. That's Alex and Jason. Jason, oh, what's know. happening? Living the dream one day at a time. All right. Brilliant. Let me turn up Jason a touch. I'm going to turn Alex up too. Let's see if our audio levels even right. out a little bit. All right. We're good. Um, how's everyone else doing? Everybody enjoy their uh, $42,000 Bitcoin rally weekend? Yes. We've since pulled back a little bit, but it felt good uh, tapping 40 and then 42. I know 42 was, uh, was a number. We were talking about... Um, frequently on the show in the last couple of weeks uh you know 42 k is featured in the polls as one of the, i guess one of the targets one of my subconscious targets i suppose since i'm the one writing the polls but um we hit 42 the question is now um will, will we get some good continuation from here or do we have to test down um you know we've pulled back about six percent from the weekend highs um what can one expect heading into uh the first week of august in the month of august in general so our analysts will uh, will be plotting, of course, uh, as what they see as likely price action heading our way soon. All right, what else we have to uh, cover today? Um, yeah, so you know, I usually call this the your favorite two hours in crypto podcasting. Well, making a slight change to the show, guys. In fact, there's some big changes coming to the show soon. I keep teasing this because it's coming ever closer. Very excited to roll out some new stuff here on the, uh, the Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. Uh, but one of the things that we are going to be doing is we're going to be trying to be a little more efficient with our time. This two-hour show is going to get compressed down. Well, let's just say for today, we'll call it... Uh, we're going to try to chop, say, 15, 20 minutes off the show. We'll see how we fare. Um, where... How, how, how far will this... Uh, uh, belt tightening go, uh, hard to say, maybe hour, hour and a half show, yeah, 60 to 90 minutes is what we'll be targeting. So, um, notice some, uh, some, some slight tw changes along the way, et cetera, et cetera, you know, just bear with us, uh, we're, yeah, we're, we're bringing something fresh to you. All right, enough of that, that is your intro, guys, uh, and, uh, with that out of the way, um, Yes, we were not going to be looking at the price action, at least not my price action this morning. We're going to save TA, whose time is precious, um, for a little later in the show. In time. Um, let's, uh, let's just quickly cover how today's schedule is intended to unfold. I'm going to go straight into the news today. And uh, then I will take a brief look at, uh, at Bubbles before, of course, I shout out the audience and we get into the main TA. Know how we do on time today we'll see how everyone fares should be good all right let me just double check one last thing yep it's good chat is good all right we are ready let's fire it up um let's uh let's have a look at uh at a few news items today we'll try to get through this here let's have a look uh paypal yes uh paypal yes the uh their ambitions for uh Growing in the crypto space, well, here's here's a nice development. Apparently, they are now tapping a team in Ireland. PayPal payments giant PayPal is putting together a team in Ireland to help bolster support for its increasing crypto services. The company is now hiring for crypto-related positions and roles related to compliance and AML. PayPal also listed over two dozen openings for jobs with titles that include crypto. And it's a bit of a hiring spree over at PayPal. They are apparently, uh, you know, not resting on anything here. They're looking to charge forward in the uh, crypto adoption. Uh, here of interest. Uh, see here, of course, PayPal, like many tech giants, has got uh, offices in Ireland, right? Very favorable, I think, tax conditions over there on that island. And uh, in this case, uh, they got two offices, one in Dublin and one in Dundalk where it employs about 2,800 people. Well, now they're hiring for crypto-related positions, compliance and AML, as I mentioned earlier, a uh, host of other offerings as well involving uh, uh, one position is 
uh, being described as uh, involved in financial crime investigation and customer protection. PayPal also advertises blockchain analytics experts at both uh, both of its Ireland locations. Well, if you've ever um, anybody here ever wanted to uh, combine their passion of crypto and uh, their love, or well, maybe not love, but uh, your interest in PayPal, are you uh, you know maybe a Maybe you're maybe you're an Irish uh, citizen. Uh, this could be. I'm not sure how uh, how uh, you know how job placement might be if you're an international applicant. But uh, something to think about there. I think it will uh, being a pretty slick job at PayPal, doing what you love in crypto, guys. All right, that's enough of the PayPal update. All right, here's another item today. Uh, flash loans and duplicate websites continue to play crypto platforms in July. Man, this space could never seem to shake off the scammers. Uh, very briefly, in July, there was a flurry of sophisticated cyber attacks within the crypto sphere. Flash loans continue to concern DeFi platforms. And one security expert says, what I worry about blockchain is whether quantum computing is going to blow it out of the water. Wow, so this is a little bit of everything today. Uh, quantum computing threats flash loans and duplicate websites guys it's always just a reminder out there um you know the the space is fraught with uh, cyber criminals and all types of exploits um be careful out there try to, try to mitigate uh how much risk you take on when you're exposed to DeFi, especially up and coming uh you know DeFi platforms and of course uh, be very careful lots of phishing attempts out there lots of people are uh attempting to push you uh into a uh, fake Fake portals, fake uh, front ends for different sites. <clears throat> Don't get wrecked. Always do your due diligence. Enough of that. Let's hop into the next year. Um, this was an interesting development coming from the Ripple uh, saga. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse has filed a motion to obtain documents from Binance with assistance from the central authority of the Cayman Islands. Huh. Good luck. If you've ever tried to get trading records from Binance, I, I, I double dare to get any records from Binance. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Well, let's have a look. Apparently they're going through, uh, you know, official channels in the Caymans, but let's have a look. Lawyers representing Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse in a case against U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filed a motion for additional international discovery on August 2nd. Garlinghouse is seeking to obtain evidence from Binance Holdings Limited, a Cayman Islands-based subsidiary of the world's largest crypto exchange. Citing the Hague Convention, the defense is asking the court to issue a letter of request on behalf of the defendant to seek the assistance of the Central Authority of the Cayman Islands. The Ripple boss believes that the Binance entity has unique documents concerning his XRP transactions, which makes them relevant to the case. Uh, Good here's... luck, buddy. Good luck getting your transaction history from Binance. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of interested in this, but uh, Mr. Garlinghouse seeks foreign discovery on the basis of good faith belief that the listed entity possesses unique documents and information concerning this case, and specifically concerning the process by which transactions in XRP allegedly conducted by Mr. Garlinghouse on foreign digital asset trading platforms were conducted. Wow, so this is Garlinghouse's personal uh, Binance account? That's kind of funny. And what, you, there's just really no... They don't keep logs? What do they... Do they dump the logs? I haven't really looked at my Binance history and logs but i figured there'd be some some logs you could have the thing maybe, spit out maybe it's that the government is calling into question xrp's logs or you know ripple's logs so they're like fine you know let's look at the exchange oh um yeah maybe that is that a swipe at uh... my understanding for the audience doesn't know is my understanding that binance actually lost their records their own records from like 2017 2018 wow so i i because a lot of people have had problems getting their records from that time, and it's like it's widely suspected that they just they lost their fucking records, um, and that's why they like can't provide it. Um, so it, that might be the issue too. They may be unable to provide these records to Brad Garlinghouse. Very <clears throat> well. Well, that's uh, some sense. Maybe, maybe a way to find out. Maybe a relief to hear, right? When the uh, when the tax authorities uh, and the feds come kicking down your door, demanding to see uh, your Finance history, <laughs> you'll tell them uh, CZ lost it in the fishing accident. No, oh, um, there you go. But I I tried. I, I genuinely did, but uh, alas, my all my all my addresses, all my records were lost. There. Um, all right. Here's a little something I wanted to point out. Uh, all right. So back in June, Google announced that uh, they're going to be tweaking 
uh, part of their uh, AdSense, I guess, policy. Updating the financial products and services policy to clarify the scope and requirements to allow advertising of crypto-related businesses and services. All right, so um, they announced this in July, but it's actually going live tomorrow. I don't know how much real significance it's going to have, um, but uh, supposedly they are, uh, they're kind of liberalizing their uh, approach to, uh, well, of course, if, if you meet, of course, the, the proper conditions. But I guess what, this, uh, me, what I'm getting at is um, in the near future, you might expect to see more crypto-related uh, businesses advertised on Google and uh, maybe that's a good thing maybe that's going to get more eyeballs more uh, more excitement in the space um, so that helps the number go up something to think about tomorrow August 3rd advertisers beginning to offer um, all these extra crypto related businesses of course uh, does have a kind of a high barrier entry here fence you have to be registered as a uh, money service business with FinCEN in at least one state as a money transmitter, or you have a, a federal, you're registered with a federal state chartered banking entity, comply with relevant legal requirements, et cetera, ensure their ads and landing pages comply with those policies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this potentially usher in a, a new wave of, uh, of interest and adoption. Uh, you know, if there's a huge deployment of marketing money from the likes of, you know, maybe Coinbase or Binance or whoever else. Um, this might draw more and more people into the space. So just a little something I want to point out. This is going live tomorrow. We'll see if it does make a big splash in awareness in the space. All right. Only a couple items I uh, mention here. Arm has officially made it to Coinbase Pro. Is this an old tweet? How did this get in here? It is an old tweet. Um, yes, Farm was the last week news item so let's continue all right a couple all items left now saudi aramco gazprom exxon mobile moved into bitcoin mining hmm. yeah oil giants are beginning to move into bitcoin mining to reduce harmful greenhouse emissions like methane through gas flaring gas of course is a byproduct in oil production with it often burned flared because of quote economic regulatory technical barriers to the development of gas markets and gas infrastructure prevent it from being used says the world bank during that burning process they produce significant amounts of methane with bitcoin providing a profitable solution as this gas can be turned into energy instead to mine bitcoin uh Crusoe energy systems for example has built data centers around shale drilling sites to harness some of the surplus gas at the source to turn it into electricity which is then used well, they'll now be used to mine Bitcoin. All right, so let's see. Going, but uh, the general idea is, uh, I guess a lot of these um, <clears throat> uh, oil extraction uh, sites uh, do produce methane as a byproduct, and I'm pretty sure they basically have to dispose of, or basically they can't exactly store it, much less um, send it to a refinery or anything. So I guess a lot of it gets burned off at the site, basically a complete waste. Why not use that to, uh, you know, power some local equipment? I guess the yeah um get and some it, biddies. get some biddies yes uh, this will be the new uh the new go-to what to do with all that surplus gas uh says uh the uh aramco um cto somebody over there uh well we're gonna mine biddies with it as jason says uh let's yeah. just read this very brief quote oh, energy from associated gas can power data centers and mining farms this will increase the percentage of rational use of raw materials this is especially true for remote regions of Siberia and the Arctic, where transportation of associated gas from the field is completely unprofitable, said uh, the head of uh, Gazprom, NEF, the subsidiary of Gazprom itself. The, uh, just the gas burned by Saudi Aramco would be sufficient to power half of the Bitcoin network, uh, said Raymond Nasir, head of the mining operations of Wise and Trust. It's crazy how much you know, there's surplus, there really is when you take a closer look at the infrastructure, right? Whether it's uh, hydroelectric uh, excess uh, capacity of energy, right? Output uh, energy, or in this case, um, just the gas that they burn off, just like a byproduct of extracting oil from the ground. Um, they're just burning off all this gas. That's kind of a waste. You could power half the network with some of the excess ga uh, gas that these um, uh, energy extraction sites generate it's crazy it goes to show you bitcoin can nestle itself in very comfortably within uh this you know ostensibly think outside the box yeah sustainable framework um not bad 
Great. And again, this is the beauty of Bitcoin, guys. Unlike an actual call center or, um, you know, like a local banking branch, you can't exactly set that up um, in Siberia somewhere next to an oil rig, right? But Bitcoin, thanks to, uh, you know, fiber optic telecommunication, the miners can go anywhere into the far recesses of the world. And uh, the blocks, the blocks can make their way around the world much easier than you can, I guess, transport things like excess gas from your oil extraction facility. All right, enough of that. Finally, you know we're big fans of Chardex on here. Not trying to shill too hard, but uh, yes, Chardex is a go-to for here for us on here on the team. You know, we do like charting our ETH tokens using Chardex, um, even even BSC tokens with uh, with the Chardex beta. Uh, let's see here, there's a tie-up between Polygon and Chardex that uh, Alex brought my attention to. Let's have a look here. Um, in a previous post, we mentioned the following, says Chardex, sponsorships and partnerships from uh, automated market makers and other networks keep deflationary model intact and even goes a step further than the subscription model would by Mac and Burn versus just Burn as we would accept payments in their native token and will ensure long-term sustainability as well as a strong show of support from respected networks. Continued, we are delighted and incredibly excited today to confirm that we have received a grant from Polygon, which will enable us to remove the chart holding requirement for viewing Polygon charts across the many automated market makers in the Polygon ecosystem. This is a big step in ensuring long-term sustainability of the ChartX platform and the chart token. All right, yeah, this is so a pretty- there hasn't really been a great way for people to chart uh, Polygon tokens, uh, you know, like on a separate platform off of the automated market makers, and uh, now people can, uh, and it won't cost them anything. They won't have to hold the chart, so. Um, yeah, this is uh, very cool. Being able to get your um, your Chardex cake and uh, eat it too without uh, having to necessarily use the, the native Chardex token. Kind of cool. Um, a bit of a bridge between Polygon and Chart. I'm glad that uh, Chart is making uh, important tie-ups in the space. Um, they seem to keep moving forward. Plenty of other um, DeFi ecosystems, uh, whatever you want to call them, um, could use, uh, you know, robust charting software, robust analytics type software. I think Chartex has got it covered. Go Chartex, go. Um, it's nice to see it. Uh, Polygon ecosystem has an explosive growth and, and as an ecosystem, uh, which we at Chartex expect even bigger things over the coming months, reads the Chartex medium post. Right? Polygon's on the come up, major growth. Apparently Avalanche. Uh, pretty uh, pretty quiet on the avalanche front, but here's Polygon doing big, big things. Good stuff. All right, that's enough of the news today, and we're doing pretty good on time. Go ahead and quickly kind stop. Kind of a slow news weekend. Indeed, indeed. Hey, still extracted a few stories. Let's go have a brief look at the bubbles. All right, BCHA having another big day. I looked at the BCHA, BC. Um... And uh, I'm trying to figure out what was behind this big move, and uh, didn't really see yeah, much. It's just a real Bitcoin. Real Bitcoin. Well, it's a real, real Bitcoin BCHA. cash. A real Bitcoin cash. Yeah, BCHA, uh, Bitcoin Cash, ABC, one of the forks of Bitcoin Cash. And do I have ABC? I wonder. I wonder. I probably do. I, the, I, I doubt you would. Why would you own Bitcoin? Yeah. I own cash. I have BCH. I have a bag of BCH. Um, from the fork. It seems weird, you see, because you're such a Bitcoin maxi. That seems weird to, odd to me. Um, free. It was free money. I and um, I didn't really see a purpose necessarily in, in selling it. You know, um, maybe one day, one day, maybe I'll dump it overboard. I was sure, sure tempted at the last high. Um, but uh, I guess I have access to some of the forks as well in my wallet. But ECH aside. Uh, yeah, had a big 20% day on top of having a few, uh, was also one of the runners last week. Beyond that, Anchor, Anchor's up 11%, Bitcoin Gold's in here too with 5% gains, Rune, Quantum, Utum, depending how you pronounce it, of course, uh, Luna and a few others all up single digits. Kind of a lackluster day in the alt space, uh, kind of a mixed bag, everything down plus minus 5 to 5%-ish. Yep, uh, not really much to mention here. Um... I would ask though, um, Jason, did you hit it one of your take profits on your Bitcoin long? I do think you were like 42k hit. Somebody must have took profit somewhere on something, right? Well, here's the 
thing. Um, we've, I've already. Um, I'm letting the last twenty percent of my original uh, Bitcoin long from thirty two ride. So we've already hit TP1, TP2, and then I, I pulled the TP3. We're well above TP3. It was at like 35. So just kind of waiting for uh, today might be the day that I have to exit it, but uh, we're still just kind of sitting on it. We were, the Luna, we were in the Luna trade, right, guys? Yeah, but I think that smoked all the TP. Yep. All right. I figured it would by now. All right. So... We're right now we're in GRT and... Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm still in uni with 20% left and zam with 20 percent left and oh. btc i so. actually i didn't end up opening any new trades last night the market just it was either overextended to the long side or like ready for a complete pullback so i just i would rather wait for continuation long signals at this point rather than like trying to take anything new yeah right all right well uh good to hear it looks like the last month of july um yeah, it worked out pretty good for the trainers. Um, good stuff there. Um, go ahead and hop into the uh, live chat. Let's see. Picking it with us this uh, Monday afternoon, the first show of the month of August. Let's see here. Daniel. Daniel on YouTube, first in the chat. Hi, guys. Shout out to Daniel Electric on DLive. Shout out to YouTube. Dave Rice on YouTube as well says, It's a lovely day. Don't get wrecked. Um, you're totally right, Dave. <clears throat> it is a nice day, and uh, I always advise not getting wrecked. Crypto Cats is with us on D Live. Shout outs to you, Mika Smith over on YouTube. YouTube shout outs. Good evening to you. Yeah, uh, Franklin MC. Good morning, guys. Shout outs to Franklin Rolo Maximus. Right on time. Yes, you certainly are. Welcome to the show. Let's get that bread. Yes, please. Need the keys to the bakery. We have them right here. Premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Um, Taz Blitz. Good evening, guys. Shout out to Taz Bliss. A very good evening to you. Good afternoon, Crypto Cats. David Rice. All that extra funds that ended up in your accounts need to be returned. What extra funds in my account? They're all those are all mine. Uh, Mr. Ether, Robert Warner. Love the intro. Okay, I'm glad you liked the intro. We got a new one coming your way soon. Uh, Polly B. Hey, people. Shout outs to Polly B. Because Smith says, yeah, I was just literally listening to the song, thinking I should remix it or something. Well, you better remix it soon. Is the new um, the new abridged intro is coming to the show very soon? One more five minute countdown, guys. We're going to be doing the ninety second countdown to go live. Trimming, trimming, trimming. That's the name of the game for breaking Bitcoin this month. Alex eighty one SG. Hi guys, and happy Monday. Well, happy Monday to you, Alex eighty one. Um, let's see here. Uh, why mess with protection? Hey, um, yes, that's my thoughts too, Mika. I'm not sure what he meant. Rolo Maximus, that's just a delaying tactic for the XRP scammers. Rolo Maximus, you, uh, you definitely don't hold any punches when it comes to XRP. Uh, Rolo says all logs are there. I guess they should have saved the logs on the blockchain somewhere, encrypted it, of course, um, to make it somewhat private. Maybe they would have kept a copy of it out there. Hilarious. Uh, Crypto Bull 21. More finance FUD and a mix of XRP2. Yes. <laughs> finance FUD and XRP in one story. What uh, What more? What more could you ask for? Uh, Binance has no doors. Oh, you mean like back doors? What are we talking about? Uh, Blackbird 987 is with us on DLive. Hello, hello. <coughs> Philly Carr. Evening, guys. Shout outs to Philly. Uh, here's Bricks. Bricks on a DLive. Evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bricks. My man, um, Prophet Bear, what's up, CC fam? Just checking in. Good to see you, Prophet Bear. Welcome back. Ernest the Gaia, cheers all. Cheers to you. Uh, Cali Guard, Cali Guard over on eLive. Fairly new user. Maybe I've seen a name before. If not, welcome to the show, Cali Guard. Uh, Philly Carr over on YouTube already mentioned. Yes, I do see your request. Philly's asking for the VIX, so I'm not going to make that a formal request. Um, maybe Alex will remember that for his main analysis. A little stop. No, we'll, we'll put it as a formal request because I, I won't. The VIX is not something I normally look at. All right, no problem. Uh, just bought a new laptop, Subscriptable 21, on purse with BCH. Only reason I have one. Not sure what you mean by a new laptop on purse with BCH. So you, you, you cashed in your BCH and uh, you bought a new lappy. Well, congrats, Crypto Bull 21. I hope you have a slick new laptop. Let me know, uh, is it a gaming laptop? You got any gaming chops? Go with that laptop? Do let me know. B-Flow with the real Bitcoin Cash. Please stand up and put one of those fingers on each hand up. <laughs> All right. 
Indeed. Uh, Ernest of Guy is super easy to set up a business on Bcash with just a mail address plus read.cash uh, blog could be very useful. Uh, okay, interesting. Yes, BCH, of course, was one of the aspirations of the whole project was uh, um, more merchant-friendly crypto, more merchant-friendly version of Bitcoin, I should say. Um, alas, even with all those tools, such little uptake, it's crazy. Um, crypto AF 2017 on Twitch. Hey guys, love the show. Could you briefly look? Yes, I'll add that to the list. Hang tight. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Yes, no KYC. Yes, there is. No, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. All right. Last couple comments, and let's get with the show. Benil, B I N I L. Bro, hey, are you seeing this message? Yes, Benil, I do see your message. Welcome to the show, dear YouTube user. Please do follow and subscribe if you could. If you are hearing me and I'm reading you, follow and subscribe to confirm. Crypto Bull 21, shout outs to you as well. Oh, I see what you're writing here. You got an Asus ZenBook Pro. Uh, let's see here 4K Ultra HD display. Intel Core 1070 and the GeForce RTX 2060, dude, nice. That is, uh, that's not bad for an entry-level gaming laptop. Um, Crypto Bull hit me up sometime. We'll uh, we'll exchange Steam information. All right, that's enough of that. Um, why so much hate on BCH? Uh, uh, why so much hate on BCH? Well, what does BCH do exactly again? Eh, higher speed, lower fee version of Bitcoin, but alas, it would. But it's not. It's not really like higher speed, is it? Uh, I do think they have like some zero confirmation hack. Um, honestly, my my main. It's unsecure. It's insecure. My main, it's yeah, it doesn't definitely doesn't have the the security chops of Bitcoin, the hash rate of Bitcoin's networks. It's cheaper to use, indeed, says uh, CryptoBull21. Sure. Um, I, I think most people's objections are just how the community fracture went, how uh, you know the uh, the BCH crowd tried to wrangle Bitcoin in their direction, and uh, it kind of kind of failed. And uh, so I think there's just a lot of bitterness, a lot of soreness, because. Uh, you know, maybe maybe the Bitcoin community belonged behind a united front, and then here we are, kind of um, uh, infighting, so to speak. It kind of fractured the community, splintered the culture, and uh, I don't think it did it any favors. Do I? I guess I place more of the blame on the BCH side, but that's my own personal bias. All right. Uh, any word says I don't trust Intel. Uh, any word you are wise not to trust Intel. Alas, uh, everything if it's not. Uh, Intel, well, every other, you know, the uh, the AMD stuff has its own <laughs> own concerns. All right, Blackbird, and he's saying, why does Alex sound like he's standing in front of a at the other corner of the room? Um, yeah, I'm really sorry, guys, but the room I'm in right now has no furniture in it, so it's very echoey. Um, there's basically nothing I can do to fix that. <laughs> Nothing he can do to fix that, guys. I'm really sorry for uh, Alex's equiness today. Uh, you'll have to bear with it. Alex, of course, living the life of an international trader. He is on the go. Um, yes, even in Puerto Rico, he is uh, kind of still moving around. Alex, I wish you the best of luck in securing your permanent residence there. But in the meantime, we'll have to bear with him, guys. Don't act like you're not jealous. You know, some of you guys are probably tuning in from your 9 to 5. Uh, while Alex uh, lounges on and off the beach in Puerto Rico um, with a greatly reduced no tax. No furniture. Tax yes, uh, you give up uh, what you save in taxes. You also give up in furniture. Um, alas, he will uh, he'll work out. Uh, Blackbird says, put the mic closer to you and talk quietly. May maybe it'll work. Um, I think he's using his laptop mic, so um, yeah. unless he, uh, unless he uh, you know, Straps the the laptop to his head. Uh, it's gonna have to probably stay put, guys. So I ask you to bear with him. That's it. Let Everybody. Me should... I, let me see if I've got my headset. All right. Yeah, actually, headset might work. Headset might work, guys. But that's it. Everyone's <clears throat> shouted out, and the show is uh, fairly well on schedule. I like it. 
Uh, let's let's keep it rolling. Polly B. Well, he gets his head, so I'm gonna shout out a couple more users. Polly B. Shoutouts to you. Um, Blackbird says Alex is in shambles. No, he's far from it. Uh, he's lounging. He is doing uh, his thing. Giovanni Lewis on YouTube. What do you think of the boson protocol? Um, I really don't know much about the boson protocol. We don't really do fundamentals too deeply here on the channel. We generally just look at the charts. What I do know about boson, it's been like. Uh, it's been running. It's been up like 300% in like just as many weeks. Um, um, not sure. I will add Boson, Giovanni Lewis, to the uh, to the request section of the show, and maybe we'll take a look at the Boson chart and uh, give you our thoughts. But uh, something tells me that protocol has run pretty hard in the last couple of days. Alex, do let me know when you're back. All right, still away, no problem. Like kind of here. All right, let me. I am gonna try, and I, I only have my Bluetooth headset, so we're gonna link it up. No problem. We're gonna try this. Do it. See how it goes. Take your time. Take your time, and um, I have to change your uh, device settings. Settings after you connect it. But... Let's see here. Boson Protocol is a trust-minimized and cost-minimized protocol that automates digital to physical redemptions using NFTs encoded with game theory. Interest. Powerful e-commerce platforms have captured the market. These monolithic intermediaries extract excess value. Boson Protocol's visions enable decentralized commerce ecosystem by funding and accelerating the development of a stack of specialist applications to disrupt, unbundle, and democratize commerce. Well, it sounds interesting. Real world interface between the metaverse oh, and the physical wow. world. No, I'm sorry. There's no headsets today, guys. No headsets. Guys, bear with it. He sounds perfectly clear, though, so we will bear with it. Oh, Don't yeah. mind the echo for a day. Tomorrow, we will get some egg cartons and staple them to his wall. The Grand Canyon. Uh, yes, exactly. Well, um, make promises that I can't keep, so I don't know if there's going to be echo tomorrow or not. Yes, um, we will have to bear with it, guys. Sometimes the TA, the TA quality remains uh, uh, unassailable, but sometimes the audio quality can vary. We'll bear with it, guys. You know what you're here for. It's the TA, and we're moving into that next. Alex, if you could be so... Oh, he's already live. Let's uh, connect to Alex now. Hopping in to the live scene. Yep, we're all synced up. BTC USD on the daily BitMEX chart. As for the rest of yous, I'm going to hop into the live chat, start extracting everyone's request. If you have a chart request, get some new uh, commenting this afternoon. Guys, now is the time. Drop your request in the live chat. Get to it in a few minutes. In the meantime, go into A. Okay. So, uh, with the retest at the top of the trading range uh, and having fulfilled the measured move of the uh, descending wedge that we broke out of. Uh, at this point, certainly looks as if we're gonna be pulling back here. So this is the broken trend. See, we break below it. We could come back up and uh, retest 40K from below, but I fully expect us to break back down towards uh, 36,000. Uh, probably still 40 to 34,000. That hasn't really changed over the weekend. We didn't really move that much. Feel some bullish divergence on the four hour if it holds here, though. Yeah. Like I said, we'll, we're going to come up here and then reject it. Yeah. I'm not, uh, yeah. To me, right now, this isn't really anything worth writing home about. Especially now that we're back below 40,000, back inside of this trading range. Now, this is all back on the table. So I, I do think I want to see us come back down towards 35,000. Nothing really else to say here on Bitcoin. We'll see what happens. Uh, Ethereum, interestingly, is diverging from Bitcoin at this time. You can see it. This, this is still holding the uptrend, right? This has not broken the uptrend that we're eyeing. And if you look at Ethereum Bitcoin, it looks like a breakout to me. Yeah, three day looks pretty solid here too. Uh, at this point, I would be looking for 0.08, maybe even 0.1. That's 0.1. 
point one. Point one is the highs up here. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite the uptrend on ETH on the daily. Yeah. So yeah, I, I this this looks good. This looks like a good break. So as I had previously said, if if we broke down here, then it was like definitely for sure along. But if we turned up here and we crossed the downtrend, then it was like for sure an uptrend, right? So now that we know what's going on here, let's let's I, I'm, let's we're gonna look at Bitcoin dominance. But I assume here that Bitcoin dominance is gonna be turned downwards. With Ethereum pulling value out of Bitcoin here, um, that should be reflected on the Bitcoin dominance chart. There we go. And there it is. Uh, with with the break of this uptrend, that will be kind of the nail in the coffin of the idea that Bitcoin is going to outperform alt seal uh, alts here. We may uh, we may very well get an alt season led by Ethereum. Uh, if that happens, then we'll see Bitcoin dominance continue to fall in this spot. That's uh, that's that's kind of like the definition of it. Yep. Let's see. Three black crows. Mm -hmm. So this is Dragon Perp holding our holding our retest of the weekly parabolic trend. D5 Perp showing a little strength. This might actually be over resistance slash support. I would consider this whole level right here resistance and support. So support. Support right here, resistance right here, resistance right here. It's like a fake out. So we push down, we hold this. I think DeFi continue to move up here. Privacy perp not looking nearly as good here. Exchange perp holding sideways. Ship perp. I think we're still going to get this little bit of pullback here before we get the full swing upwards. Remember? We're looking yep. for a measured move of the descending wedge and also a little bit of market symmetry. See, we come down, blah, blah, blah. We come up and then we basically sort of mirror this pattern. Yeah, and that would that would build you a nice little inverse head and shoulders to take a shot up to the next level. Perhaps that's if we that's if we come up here again. All I'm yeah. saying for sure is that we're definitely going to come up back towards this area and then break down. Uh, alt perp with major alts. This looks good towards doing the full sweep back up towards resistance here, and uh, also hitting this uh, this higher order block oh, that's what I'm looking at right there link continuing to follow through kind of as expected ever since we had this break of the downtrend here on uh, the link Bitcoin pairing Remember, uh, if you guys will remember last week, Bitcoin pairings are the things to check here. We only want to be in something that's going to outperform Bitcoin. And frankly, you may want to consider looking at the Ethereum pairings too, because if Ethereum is going to outperform Bitcoin, maybe you should be in something that's going to outperform Ethereum. Otherwise, just be in Ethereum, right? It's, it's, like, it's a simple trade. You, know, you don't necessarily have to overcomplicate it if you think Ethereum is going to outperform at this time. Maybe the best thing to do is just, you know, sit on your hands and sit in Ethereum. So, wow, we're really going through this episode at a lightning pace today. I feel like, because we're, we're already about to hit the Dixie. I see yeah. a user asking me to turn up the volume. I do know it's coming in a little loud. I'm trying not to make the uh, echoey Alex come in too loud, but I will uh, I will add a little bit of volume, guys. You might need to turn down your speakers if you had them up high. Just a little volume warning. Um, also, I see all the requests coming in. Quite a few new users. Your requests are logged, guys. Keep them coming. Dixie getting a little oversold on the daily. Uh, as you can see, we're pretty extended from uh, our daily baseline here. The baseline is all the way up here. We're all the way down here. 
I'm expecting a, uh, a mean reversion on the dollar back towards resistance and to ultimately reject from this area of resistance and then the next leg down. Uh, maybe to find support around 91, we're not really sure yet, but it just seems like this is our next area of support resistance. So we're, we're expecting a retest and move down. And I can even see a scenario where that plays out to, to hit your bottom box before it even gets that mean reversion. Not the not the bot the middle one basically the before it gets. Oh, you just think it's keep gonna keep going down here? There is I've seen that play out many times. So you'll have to watch the resistance that comes in there and whether you you break that trend or not. But I've seen that just kind of give before, I right? I don't know. I I definitely I just it feels really overextended to me already. Um, and lower mm -hmm. time frames are strong. But I I hear you. I mean, it doesn't obviously. I'm not guaranteeing anything. It doesn't have yeah, to. Yeah, absolutely. Thing. Just when I look at that, my gut feeling tells me it's just going to consolidate right there in that little pot pattern and make another leg down. Okay. Um, all right. So dollar sideways, traditional market sideways. Traditional market sideways. Uh, getting continued confirmation on a potential market top here on the Dow Jones. Having a really hard time staying above resistance. Now we're really starting to break down. This does not look that good. But I, I'll say this. It's possible. Maybe we get like a pop off of this area tomorrow. And this is actually just like a baseline bounce retest. And we have already turned resistance into support. But as long as we're below 350, it's a little suspect here. Uh, NASDAQ gap up today and then trade down all day long. So we're, we're still up on the day because we gapped up so high this morning, but all we've done is trade down today. This is kind of interesting below the daily baseline here. We're not out of the woods yet. We still are operating underneath this bearish divergence. S&P 500 gap up today, trade down all day long. Not able to make a new high, not able to get above this resistance level. Not a good look. This is very rough looking here. Maybe we really are gonna pull back here on traditional markets. Hmm. Make up your mind. I know. Well, we've certainly seen they can keep marching up here. All right, let's see what world markets are doing. All right, precious metals. Well, it's just kind of trading sideways here. It looks like we could get a retest of of the 1780s. But I still feel I just want to see see a swing back up towards you know 1850 1875. So I'm long biased here more than anything. I I, I think it should be long gold in this spot. Huh. Silver is entering long territory on my system, but I I do not think this is an ideal spot to be longing from. I think we're beneath resistance right here. Donor resistance for sure. Yeah. Three day time transformation kind of likes this spot for an oversold signal to this. Uh, maybe. 
Kind of got to break a trend here. Almost. Let's see. Maybe this is like a descending wedge. And if so. I just, I don't see anything really uh, to do here right now on uh, silver. I think it continues to break down. Yeah. But, but I mean, there's nothing for us to do because we're above the daily baseline. Yeah. Um, palladium here, still at resistance. This looks like we could push further up into this area. We're putting in... Uh, Kind of a bullish divergence here on, on the daily. I think I still ultimately expect us to follow this uh, this track. Mm. Not yet. Is this enough reaction off of support? But this is starting to shape up pretty good. Every time we push down into this area, buyers show up, push, buyers, push down, buyers, push down, buyers. So if we pop back up out of this area, this could be good to take long back into the uh, 1175 range. There we go. That's what I thought was going to happen. Now that makes more sense. So, BCO, BC8, uh, yes, BCO. I was right the first time. BCO is uh, it's starting to break down here on the weekly, as you can see, kind of trapped below our uh, weekly moving average. Getting a weekly bearish engulfing candle here, time transformation pointing down. I am really expecting us to break back down towards uh, at least 62. And if we do break down here, I think I expect us to sweep all the way back towards the uh, $47, $45. The board is long here. This is definitely a long. So as you can see on the daily, we've started putting in a, a higher low here. So lower low, lower low, lower low, higher low. Huh, interesting. This reminds me a lot of, this reminds me a little bit of the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. This area right here. So this area right here. Let's look back at that. In this area right here. So I'm fully expecting a slowly move up here, break out and then retest of $7 on corn. Natural gas, still finding a lot of resistance here at $4. Maybe we're not gonna get 450? That's not really good look on lower time frames, but I will say, I love how the market is like really following along with our resistance level right here. Yeah. Getting stuck under the point of control there too now. Yep. Soybeans, probably still a lie. I 
I think sugar has probably made it over resistance here. I would consider being long sugar in this spot. Wheat looks very strong. Yeah, this is a this is definitely a resistance break right here. Yeah, I'd be long wheat. Australia, kind of a strong day, but we're hanging out in the liquidity of the high right here. I'm not sold yet. Is that a new all-time high? 7501. Yes. Nice. Uh, China getting a little bit more support off of the previous all-time high area. Man, they got hammered, huh? Yeah. So at this time, I'm long biased on the China A50. This is clearly incredibly oversold versus the previous trend. I think I'd like to see us come all the way back up and retest uh, 16.5, 16.6. At least 1600, right here. We come all the way back up and retest this area, this high resistance, resistance, resistance right here, support. I think that makes a lot of sense. And our weekly downtrend is all over here. So we got plenty of room to move up. France uh, finishing the measured move to the top of the range. From here, it could break out further. It could break down. I'm kind of unsure. I would, I would classify this as bullishly postured. Uh, but we would have to close this week above 66.30. That's what I want to see Bitcoin do. Yeah. Um, for Hong Kong here, let me let's zoom out. Yeah, to me, this looks as if we're going to pull back up towards 2800. So right, right here. We pull back up and retest this area before further breaking down. I don't like Hong Kong's chart here. UK is arguably still just retesting resistance before further breakdown. I'm not sold yet. We need new all-time highs, then I'll be sold on the UK. Start leaving notes. Imagine if we started getting notes from Alex in the past and not just like buy zones. Oh my God. Oh, is Alex from the past from the future? How did he do that? I hope you buy DeLorean. Yeah. India is not yet out of the... Uh, yeah, it's not yet out of the woods. 
we need to make new all-time highs. But if we were to break this trading range upwards, that, then we'll talk. But for right now, I still feel as if we're just dumping volume here at resistance before we break down. Yeah, I mean, look at the look at the monthly here. You see the lack of the lack of momentum. So big candle upwards, kind of mediocre, medium candle upwards, small candle doji upwards. That closed in this month. I mean, it's it's day two. We're opening a little up, but I suggest to you this month, big candle yeah. downwards. It's what I say to you, big candle downwards. Japan, y'all know that we were looking for this breakdown for a while from this area. We're actually, we're looking for a full move to here. At this time, we may be turning support into resistance. So we had support here, support, 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 support. Push below this area and now we move up. Look at this wick, we're getting resistance in this spot. Now people are still selling into, the, into us here. So we're going to look here for more closes below this area and a push down towards 26.3. Netherlands, the old dog, was this a fake out? We'll see. Singapore, rejection from resistance. Ugly. This really was just a retest of the liquidity of the high after all, it seems. Taiwan, I've been saying that it was going to come up and retest the point of control. It now has. We could see this push up just a little bit further, but this is a breakdown. I'm telling you, short this. Short it. Short it. Just be short this thing. <laughs> Look at this on the monthly. Just move down to retest the trading range, right? Look at that. Short this spot. Uh, UK 10 year bonds. This looks like a continuation to me. Come up. Baseline bounce long, push upwards here. 100%, okay, not 100%, 75% chance we push up here. It's like a big chance, lots of chance. Lots of chance. Yeah, it's bigly, his chances are bigly. Uh, US 10 year, I see a break of the lower time frame downtrend. We go up more here. It's a continuation signal, we go up. Two year. Ah, looks like Alice of the Past got this one wrong. We'll leave this here in case we kind of reject from up here and come down. You know, we don't want to be so. You know, let, I like to leave our TA up so even if we're wrong on timing or in order, we at least remember what we had, you know, thought was going to happen. But for now, this looks kind of invalidated to me. I, I, I think perhaps we're not going to be breaking down from the resistance here of the two year note. So remember guys, bonds moving up are signs that stocks are gonna move down, right? Yeah. Remember? Five year over resistance and support level. This is strong. Support, resistance, resistance, break. It's a very good continuation signal here on the five year. Russell 2000 continues to hang out at resistance of the uptrend, uh, support now resistance and the point of control. S&P breaking down as you know. 30 year bonds, 
banger day. Look at this continuation signal. She's a beaut. And US Wall Street 30. This looks to me like today is the ideal time to start shorting this. You can see this very interesting bearish divergence here. That your Deutsche Bund's strong. Very strong. Very strong. So if I got a monthly. Maybe we're just at resistance. Maybe. What? Where's our uptrend? Whoa. Ooh. Okay. Maybe, maybe it's just a retest here, and then we're gonna break down further, right? Because we, we did not hold this decade-long uptrend. We broke it this year. And you would think if if we broke an uptrend this year, then you know maybe maybe especially a ten year one, we're not going to break all the way down right away. It could take a few months to see it play out, but probably we're in for more downside than just slowly bitty bit. Okay. Well, I'm ready to do chart request. Let's do but, it. So that is that. That's where I'm at. Is that I'm just not sold the traditional markets are going to be okay this month. If we if we climb up and make new highs, then great. I'm all for it. I, I'm ready for crypto, crypto to blow up here. Uh, but crypto cannot if the stock market like crashes. Yeah. All right. Well, there was uh, Alex's TA segment coming your... Well, just wrapped up now, actually. And... Got some requests in the pipeline that we do. I'm um, just trying to determine when best to open the chest. Actually, before we do that, I just want to briefly shout out a couple of users here. Uh, Rhino TD joined us a little late in the stream. Says he uh, he's back. He's hacking. Yes, Rhino TD has been missing from the audience the last couple of weeks, but apparently he's I, know, I thought you had COVID. Now you're hacking. Did they kick you out because you have COVID? Yeah. Uh, good you question. Gotta go. You gotta get out of here. All good questions. Uh, I do want to shout out. We got a couple uh, diamond super chats on D Live. It was quite the diamond battle in the live chat. Uh, Rhino TD dropped a diamond writing. It's been a while. Taz Blitz dropped just this plain diamond. Thank you, to right. that, guys. Thank you. Uh, the diamonds uh, and my the... diamond handed friends. Franklin MC dropped a diamond as well, guys. Thank you. For the very, very generous, uh, generous uh, diamond giveaways, Wookie Waffin just joined on fall on uh, D Live as well. Shoutouts to Wookie. The treasure that we gained was the diamonds our friends gave us along the way. Uh yes. Um, all right, that is it. Oh yes, the lemon giveaway. I'm just trying to determine when best to give away the lemons. Um, I I'm gonna aim for two thirty. So twenty minutes exactly from now, we're gonna open the lemons, and we might even see how we get through. The requests might wrap the show up around that time too. All right. Request of the day comes from Philly Car. May I request a look at the VIX? And um, let's try the CBOE volatility index. Actually. Let's see, where are our obvious trends? Oh, 
Linear or log? What do we want to use here? I'm going to use linear trends for right now. I don't see anything super obvious. Let's look on higher time frames. Here's something. Got this trend right here that we're, depending on how you want to draw it, if we consider this to be a fake out, trend holding, trend holding, trend holding, trend breaking, at the same time we break above our moving average, then maybe the volatility index is turning a little bullish right here. Why don't we, why don't we keep our eyes on this? This is certainly an area where we would expect to see some sort of large push up in volatility, right? I mean, even, even the volatility of volatility has been falling. Like let's, let's turn on the Bollinger Band. So you see volatility expanding here at a very quick rate. With volatility really contracting so it could be time Philly it could be time what's next I mean and this by the way guys volatility rises when the stock market falls so when you see volatility go down like this that tends to be the market moving up a little bit every day a little up a little up a little up a little up, a little up. and then we get those sharp movements downwards what these spikes are. Notice March, March of 20. Yeah, high volatility, big downwards movements. So uh, when the VIX moves up, that's negatively correlated to the markets. VIX moving up usually means markets move down. Okay, so a little bit more of that give and take. What's next? All right, getting into the next one. One of the first formal requests of the day. There was a look at Vic. Shout outs to Philly Carr, longtime supporter of the channel. Uh, Philly, hope you're doing good over there. Let's get into this one for Crypto AF 2017 on Twitch. He writes, Hey guys, love the show. Can you take a brief look at QNT? Will it break $200 this week? Let's take a look. It looks like kind of a rejection candle on today. Let's let's get some uh, more data. Yeah. Hmm. Just delete all this. I like that. But yeah, let's use that one. Let's go to lower time frame for this. Uh, this week, it could, maybe. I'm, I'm pretty suspicious 
transformation exit signal right here. This is probably going to pull us out of this uptrend and then down to bring us back towards the less parabolic uptrend. So maybe not this week, maybe in like September or late August is when we is when we break $200. This is just kind of a strong rejection on today. I, I the truth is, I, you know, I'm just not sure here. We do seem to have uh, we do seem to have some bearish divergences here playing out on the 12 hour. So we kind of got three tops here. One, two, three. Pull back towards this area. Retest the uptrend. Continue onwards, maybe something like that. What do you think? Yeah. yeah, I think that we break through that trend. I think that we come down, test the lower parabolic trend, and from there you, m I yeah. mean, not really worth kind of going that far forward at that point. You just have to wait for that that other trend to hold, right? Yeah. Or right. if you, you know, if you if you look at this uh, from the perspective, uh, from the linear perspective, then I, I think it's definitely clear that this is going to keep moving upwards. So that stair stepping pattern. Now where's our linear uptrend? I actually prefer this. Up. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like that. This is our less parabolic uptrend. The more parabolic one on linear. Linear case holds out, then I guess I would be a buyer more towards 125. And if uh, if it's the if it's the logarithmic trend, then 100 dollars, 112. Okay, what's next? All right, and that's Crypto AF. There was your <clears throat> excuse me, your look at QNT, and will it break 200 dollars? We covered that one. And get into the next one. Crypto Bull 21 writes uh, requesting Dext. Dext. What is. Sure. Oh, this is Dex Tools. Well, as you guys know, this is a new chart because Dex got hacked a little while back. Who did they? What? You said, oh, did they? Yes. We covered it that day. Remember, Dex was down like 90 something percent? Yep. Uh, they performed a swap in order to contract a new address, so. Yeah. I just don't see anything to really do with Dex at this time. I guess we're probably gonna get a retest at maybe 25 cents or so. If we make a new high above 32 cents, then I'd be willing to long it for, for new highs. What's next? All right, there was a look at DEX tools for Crypto Bull 21. Go ahead and create the next request. We have Satoshi. Mitsu, Satoshi Mitsu on YouTube writes, what do you guys think of SDAO? High artificial intelligence. Man, are we getting shilled something in this request? Let's see. What is DAO? And uh, where does it show? Yeah, Singularity. It's such a buzzword these days. Like every AI project I've ever known is like, yeah, we use some deep learning and then it does some stuff. We don't really know how it works. No kidding. Uh, let's see here. It's uh, at a $150 million fully diluted market cap. Currently at only $6 million. $42. Top trading pair, Gate.io. Followed oh, by like Uniswap. Yeah, it's on Gate.io. Uh, it's also on Uniswap. If you want the token address, if you want to chart this briefly. Uh, to answer your okay. question, Satoshi Mitsu, we don't really do fundamentals too much on the show. We'd have to take a deeper dive at a separate time. We generally just do A. We give the charts a look. pretty good. 
you know, all things being, all things considered. Yeah, you're starting to break that trend. Yeah, uh, another thing I really like here is uh, is a bunch of liquidity just got put in right here. Someone put in uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollars liquidity uh, today. Interessante. Yeah. So my feelings are, I, I just, I wish we had more to work with here. Like the extra liquidity being put in today is not, you know, necessarily. I, yeah, I'll tell you what, if we, if I had to choose between us breaking up from this triangle and us breaking down from this triangle, I think it's pretty clear that we're probably likely to break upwards, you know? Yep, uh, Satoshi Mitsu in the live chat writes, uh, I think it's going to reach $10 within a few weeks. Uh, what's its all-time highs at? Three-ish? Three fifty. All right, well, expecting a $10 as a Dow soon. When you, when you look at the weekly and you see all the liquidity being put in, this is actually, this looks pretty awesome. Ten dollars, you say? You know what? Let's put out a trend-based fit extension and see what that says. I got one high and low there, so. Yep. Let's go back down the lower time frame here. Low, high, low. Well, this would put us around $8 for the 4.236. So we'll just get a little extended beyond that. We could swing up peg 10 or something. This is doable. There's a lot of liquidity here, a lot of volume, a lot of liquidity being deposited. <laughs> yep, relatively low cap. Still. Okay. Well, it's because it hasn't all been released yet. All right. Um, I if I if you if I had to choose, I would be I would choose to be long. That's how I feel about this. I would choose to be long. Agreed. Right. Well, uh, Satoshi Mitsu, there's your look at Acid Dow. Um, that that wasn't you know, worked out. Um. Was expecting a shameless shilling of some uh, drivel project, but the chart actually looks uh, pretty decent. This thing could be on its way. Here I say it, even that ten dollar moonshot, guys. This is of course investment advice, but shout outs and thanks you to uh, Satoshi Mitsu for a look and tip off to S Dow. Appreciate it. All right, let's get into the next request. Poly B on D Live requesting X H. That's Chia or I think it's. X. Um. XCH, I think it's Chia. I think you had it right. Chia Network, XCH. Top trading pair, Huobi. Huobi. Oh, Probably use trading view for that then, right? Uh, yep, and this isn't yeah, an so, Ethereum yeah. token, so it's going to be trading view. Yep. It doesn't really look that special to me. Probably likely to come back down here and retest support. I um, I would not buy the first bounce here. I'm just not really that interested in it. Eh, I don't know. That's a lot of volume coming in. No, I don't want it on percentage, asshole. Yeah, I think this is likely to come back up towards $300, but we could test lower before that happens. We could even, you know, we could come down to $200 and test that area before we do that. Um, and then I could even see us coming up towards $450, but th those are the only areas that I, I would be willing to target here. Uh, this is still just... Uh, 
there's a lot of coins that have been around for a while and they're being accumulated by big players and, and this hasn't even really started to accumulate yet i just i don't just don't know if i'm interested in this one yet there's better choices i think out there on the alt market but if you held a gun to my head i'd be long it what's next all right, there's your look at Chia Network for Poly B. Guys, just four minutes to go for the chest opening. Get your last few lemons in the live chest. Going to be deployed in, uh, yeah, about three, three and a half minutes time. All right, enough of Chia. Let's have a look. What's the next request on the board? It's Dot Poconot for Dave Rice. Briefly, let's check it out. Right to the well, top of it. Yep, this is originally one of our resistance levels that we've been eyeing. Uh, I, as you guys, I told you guys uh, all the way back in July when I took a long down in this area on DOT. I'm still in it. You know, we haven't we haven't posted an exit signal. A lot hasn't turned. We haven't broken the downtrend. But I'll tell you, today's candle is certainly a little bit concerning because we're, we're here in this resistance level, hanging out here. We put in a daily doji. Mm, that's actually and, uh, but, but on lower time frames, you look at this and you're like, well, yeah. that's not actually too bad. Yeah, that could actually keep marching up right there. Yeah. So uh, what I want is I, I just I want an exit signal or I want to break below the trend before I exit on dot. Even though that means I'm probably going to get back like 10 or 20 percent here. It sucks. But I mean, th that's, that's volatility. That's yeah. But, but I think it makes more sense than trying to dump it at every resistance level here because price has just kind of been marching up in these spots. And uh, I, I, I would let's just wait for our system to, to tell us to get out. Something's, something's not broke. Don't fix it. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I guess that concludes your thoughts on Polkadot. Go ahead yeah. and hop in. I, for what it's worth, I still think we're looking for, and, and this is an area we've already had marked out. I still think we're looking for a sweep all the way back up into this area, just like we're expecting on, uh, we were looking at the alt contracts. Remember? Mid perp. Alt perp what we're expecting what's next okay getting into the next one rodney lauer on twitch joins us alex sounds like he's in the empty arena yes he's uh in a uh, fresh room right now it's a little echoey in there bear with us hey. wait i'll have you guys know it's a full arena everybody's just very quiet okay they're very respectful uh, Bishop122 joins us on DLive. Shout out to Bishop. He says, I love this channel. Have you guys figured out that McAfee ghost token? Uh, yeah, I certainly have. We'll look at ghosts in a few minutes. Hang tight. I got to get to this next request. It's Zill and Cardano 4-Hour. Do you want Zill and Cardano, David, on 4-Hour or just Cardano? Either way, Zill and Cardano, his request. Uh, Zill USDT, literally nothing for us to do here. Trap below resistance, exit signal. Uh, if I think we'll get a pullback towards support. Um, if we do, and then we get a continuation signal, I'm in. I'm in for it. Sign me up. Uh, but for right now, I think we're gonna get kind of an inverse shouldery, an inverse head and shouldery movement back towards the support level, and then move up, and then we'll have something like that. Sort of like we were expecting on uh, right here, ship purpose. Kind of like how we have uh, drawn out here. Something something akin to that. And you see the charts are very similar anyway. So pull back, move upwards. Towards resistance. Same area we're eyeing on all the different alts, right? Okay, what's next? Hey, shout outs to uh, David Rice. That was a look at Zill or Zill and Cardano. Okay, probably just Zill. Let's look at Cardano and this one on the four hour. Pop in with Cardano, something brewing on the four hour. I uh, no, nothing particularly special here. Nothing. It looks like every other alt we've looked at. Right now, there's nothing I really want to do with it as long as we're holding the uptrend. Depending on how you want to draw it, where you, we're, we're holding it. So, 
I just, yeah, I, I, I don't see why you would want to be in this over plenty of the other alts we've looked at that are actually over resistance, which we're not here. So this is resistance to beat, and you can see we're we're not under it. And we've got an exit signal. So just, I am not interested. What's next? You opening that chest there, Jack? Yes, dear d right, I'm going to go pee. Go do that. Uh, d -Livians, I just stocked the chest. This is your warning. Probably by the time you hear this message, it's going to be opening and appearing on your screen. But I'm going to open the chest in about 15 seconds from now, giving you guys plenty of heads up. Your eyes peeled on that uh, chest prompt. Here we go. Wait any second now. Let me just do one little order. Okay, perfect. Here we go, guys. Here comes the chest. Good luck. Live giveaway going down now. Look at prompt on my screen. Anybody long? All right. Good luck, everyone. 15 seconds left in the giveaway. History Ether says, give them to me. Well, they're here and they're yours. Uh, Bishop, I did find Ghost. I mean, we're going to try and look at Ghost today. It doesn't trade. Not available widely available in all exchanges but we'll, we'll find a way to put the ghost chart up all right lemons the lemons have been given away congrats guys we gave away over 500 lemons today very curious who today's big winners are well it's taz blitz in first place 103 lemons for taz shout outs bud uh blackbird 987 60 lemons crypto bull 43 yours truly with 34 even though i gave away a lot of diamond and rhino td with 29 lemons congrats big thank you to everybody i'm back all right, he's back too, guys. All right, cool. Lemons have been given away. Um, quests, uh, yeah, need to continue. How are we doing on time? 32, all right, I'm pretty good. Here's uh, the next request, Crypto Bull 21. If there's time, can we look at BitTorrent token USD, please? We certainly can. Uh, this looks to be setting up to be a good continuation long. So here's resistance. We break it and then we turn it into support. Let's look at that on lower time frames. Yep. Keep marching up. I like that for continuation. Yeah. Right right now. Whoops. Right now, as long as we're above uh, 28 tenths of a cent, I'm inclined to be long. If we were to break back below this area, then that, that would switch to a short bias. We're also holding the uptrend. So yeah, if we, if we broke down, right, and, and it could happen, we could break down right here, right now, and then that'd be it. We'd be, we'd be below the resistance. We'd be below horizontal, uh, horse, we'd be below uh, diagonal resistance, we'd be below horizontal resistance. So we'd know, we, we'd know, oh, okay, so this is just like a fake out here, we'd come back down. Uh, but for right now, I didn't buy us long. What's next? All right, there was a BitTorrent token for Crypto Bull. Only a few minutes left now. I'm sure we can knock out the remaining requests. We have Axie Infinity for Poly B requesting A AXS. Let's do it. Um, looks like a big old short to me. Big old I think that was what I said uh, last week, too. Nothing yeah, changed once, over the weekend. And once that trim broke. Yep. I want to take the shorts. Probably got another trend. We'll keep our eyes on this trend, but I wouldn't be surprised if we wandered up here and it just broke hard. Just broke March side all the way up yep. to it. Yep. So much volume. And this is on log. Look at this on linear. So we're we're real overextended on linear. So we could go sideways and come all the way down here. We can even come all the way down to like $30, $25 right away. Just keep marching down. 
Do that and then retest the highs, maybe? Yeah. Well, see, either way, I'm not a buyer up around 40 or $50. I don't know what the exact market cap is, but whatever it is, it must be ridiculous. Yeah. Um, what's next? All right, shout out to Poly B. There's your look at Axie Infinity. Next up is Neo. Blackbird987 on DLive writes, care to take a look at Neo? And uh, Nothing really for us to do right now. As you can see, we've got this uh, exit signal yesterday. Still hanging out at resistance. This area is uh, kind of our resistance support. So as long as we're below this area, I'm not really interested. If we uh, if we were to close strongly above 45, then maybe we could talk. Um, maybe we could even get a swing back towards $60 or so. But I don't know. It's just yeah. And see, this resistance level is also. Resistance support right here too. So, in the past, this has been an area that has frequently been treated as a support resistance flip area. Hmm. Interestingly, this is showing us we held the weekly parabolic trend here. That's a good sign. I like that. As long as we can hold this area, $30 could be our bottom. What's next? All right, let's uh, get into the next request. And we have, what do we have? Oh, we have Cardano KCS on KuCoin for David Rice. Yes, Cardano trades against KCS. KuCoin, what does that chart look like? It looks pretty crappy. You can see here we're kind of running out of momentum on the weekly. Still below the downtrend. I just don't see any reason to be in ADA over KCH. I don't see any reason to be in ADA over anything. ADA is the, like the number five blockchain by market cap. Like the squeeze is, is squoezed, guys. The squeeze is squoezed. Yeah. <laughs> What's next? All right. Next up, we have uh, this question concerning Pulse Chain for Jonah. Love the show. Peeps really want to know how is everyone feeling about the Pulse Chain? Am I, am I the only one who's a little worried? Well, what are you worried about, Jonah? Um. <sighs> It's a fucking scam, man. That's those are my thoughts. But Alex, what are you worried about, buddy? Alex is, uh, you know, kind of Alex's take on this. Um, I think uh, Hex has performed well. Uh, Richard Hart is a good shill, has a loyal following. Well, two years later, if you guys will recall, a bunch of people put a bunch of money into Hex, and then Hex went down to one sat in value. That's where right. you were gonna scoop it up. I think I might do the same with Pulse. To be honest, I'm gonna wait for the big first uh, dump. Uh, maybe pick up the bottom. By... First up, why don't you wait until three years into the bear market? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Well, uh, Hex Hex performed, I guess, above expectation. He is a good shill. So if uh, if there's any if that has any reflection on what well, to expect. Yeah, I mean, frankly, the expectation was that Hex would go to zero. So anything would, by definition, perform that expectation. Yeah, perform zero. As for why you're worried, Jonah loved the show. Um, not too sure. I haven't been following Hex or Pulse super closely. <clears throat> um, I might give it a shot. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, not much more to add about that. You know how Alex feels about Richard Hart, Hex, and Pulse. Uh, all this very shady. I get it. Um, but uh, maybe maybe we'll give it a shake. We'll see. Um, let's go ahead and get into the next request. It's for Boris. A bit, oh, sorry. Rollo Maximus. Rollo Maximus, could you take a look at uh, Luxo? Or thinking of selling my stack. Um, Rollo Maximus wants to jettison LYXC <clears throat> here. 
Ouch. Oh. So we, we might have gotten rejected from this resistance. As you guys know, this is the resistance level we've been eyeing. Well, I'll tell you, if we close the today like this, then I probably would. I, I would probably, that looks like kind of a rejection to me. Yeah, probably. So what's this look like on lower time frames? Yeah. And look, someone pulled a bunch of liquidity too. Exactly. They pulled like six. No, that's, that's not that much liquidity. I mean, there's 2.5 million in liquidity and they pulled $66,000. So I guess it's not a whole lot, but. I mean, you're selling it for the long term or I just, it seems to me like an odd spot to be a seller. Like, okay, we're probably likely to pull back towards $8, maybe even $5, but afterwards, I think we'll continue onwards. It's up to you, man. For right now, I, I, I could see why you'd be interested in selling. This was our resistance level all along. We've been kind of eyeing this. And then with this big old rejection wick candle, I, I could, I'd be interested in selling too. All right, Rolla Maximus Hope. That provides some insight for you uh, let me read a couple comments here alex 81 sg on d live writes after hearing richard hart's rambling about hex is the greatest asset ever created i put hex on my blank list forever well alex 81 sg that is indeed uh how a lot of people feel richard hart a very polarizing figure and as you can see opinion splits both ways uh mr ether says they used to call ethereum a scam too indeed indeed opinions are quite varied in this space when it comes to pretty much any project. Uh, Jonah loved the show. Richard's a clever, clever guy. Have you seen how much he's put into it so far? He could wreck the whole crypto verses. I mean, he can wreck the whole crypto universe. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, but uh, again, guys, we could probably go on and on about Richard Hart and Pulse and all that. Um, um, lots of interesting next, comments. Next. Next, 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 next request. Uh, Kava, Kava for Boris Bitcoin. Happy new trading week, everyone. I'd like to take a look at Kava right now. It's already looks strong here on the weekly. Yeah, it looks strong. I like the continuation signal. Wada loves it too. That's, that's coming off today, isn't it? Yeah. I'm willing to take this back towards the highs. I like this. We'll probably take this later today. This is an example of, of uh, you know, I wanted to wait for continuation signals. I want to wait for stuff to pull back a little bit and before it continues moving upwards. So I'm willing to take this back towards $7, 750 Okay. Okay, what's next? All right, Crypto Bull says, oh, thank you. I wanted to look at Kava as well. So Kava was uh, well requested. Thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Ether says, uh, Eagled USD. I see Rodney over on Discord uh, discussing it. Let's give it a look. All right, so I guess this is kind of a, a Discord request in this case. Eagled USD it is. Yeah, this looks good. I'm willing to take this back towards $150. I like this location right here. Nice, that's like yeah. a 50% move. Yeah. We're just a little late on the continuation signal and we're still not over resistance. Support, resistance, resistance. Probably still resistance right here. Um, I'm sure you can take this long and, and it'll still go up to 150. It's it's still good here in this spot. I'm just, I don't know how I feel about it. Coming here, coming to the signal a couple days late at resistance, you know? What's next? All right, shout outs to 
Mr. Ether and Rodney on Discord. There was your look at E-Gold. All right, this is it, guys. Final request of the day. It's 2.45. Toes in the sand. ICP USDT question mark. Yeah, we can certainly look at ICP. Internet computer protocol, whatever it stands for. Uh, looks to me like it wants to retest the lows here. Maybe. I just don't see any sign of what to do with it. It's clear that there's uh, there appears to be some accumulation happening at this level. But we also thought that up here, if you recall, you know, we were we were incorrect about that. I just don't really want to do anything with it right now. What's next? That. Oh, sorry, I was muted there. Yes, I was going to wrap after ICP. ICP was the last request of the day, but Bishop in the DLive chat reminded me that I promised him a look at Ghost. Um, Ghost, of course, isn't uh, available. You're going to need to go to uh, Coin Trader or Pro Trader. What, what do you call that? I think it's Coin Trader. And a look up the ghost token, a G-H-O-S-T. This one? And... Yep, let's try that one. Is this the one? Uh, currently at 65 cents. Mm, 54 cents? Uh, probably. It then... I don't know. I just I'm not that interested uh, below resistance here. So this is Ghost Bitcoin. Okay. It's definitely been rising against Bitcoin for a couple months now. But I don't see. I don't see a good reason to enter yet. If we break upwards here, then that could be a really good movement. That's an easy like 100% if we, if we move upwards here. But that's only if. We could continue to reject from here and then test the lows. Which is also a pretty big movement downwards. What's next? Uh, that'll be the final request of the day, guys. It's uh, 249. We tried our hardest to... Uh cut down uh today's episode managed to salvage at least 10 to 15 minutes um bishop i'm gonna drop the link to the coin market cap for ghost tell me it's not the right one we could be looking at this is the mcafee ghost let me know if you're thinking of another one link me to, uh the coin market cap or something in fact uh, you can also dm me on discord if you want to help clarify if we're looking at the right ghost Although i'm pretty confident this time we nailed it all right, guys, that's it. How do you how do you guys feel? How, Alex, how do you feel? They, uh, they, we kind of went two hours, but not quite. How do you feel about the uh, truncated time? Feel good. I mean, bro, it's like 15 minutes shorter. It feels exactly the same. All right, it feels about the same. I feel like we make progress, guys. Every, every little bit counts here. Boris, Bitcoin, no lemons. Boris, did you miss the lemon giveaway? We gave it around, gave it away around 1:30. Yes. And just goes to show you, Boris Bitcoin shows up in the last 15 minutes for the lemons. Didn't even know. Indeed. All right, guys. I thank you again. Um, oh, crap. We'll be back on tomorrow, Tuesday. Yes, the Tuesday edition of the Breaking Bitcoin Market Update comes your way in just 24 hours' time. We will be back. Setting it. Thank you guys enough. Good kicking. Monday. We had a pretty active uh, Monday in the chat today. Did a decent amount of requests. Other excellent results. All right. Gonna move to wrap here. Final. Finals. Right safely.
Yep, trade safely. No real way to know where things are going right now, so best thing to do is probably just sit on your hands unless you're getting a good signal. Yes, indeed. All right, guys. Much love to you all. I go from here tomorrow. Goodbye.